did in order to produce what uh, these transhumanists so warmly refer to as humans 2.0. And as you know, uh, Steve, I've, I've actually uh, personally debated uh, leading transhumanist Dr. James Hughes. Uh, he was the, the, you know, he was the head of the World Transhumanist Association until it was changed into the IEET, which he's now CEO of the Institute for uh, Ethics and Emerging Technologies. I've also had him on my show recently. We were talking about uh, the um, the Royal Academy of Science uh, out of the UK, talking about, you know, are we alone in the universe? And I wanted to know from a transhumanist point of view, did they think there was anything in Avatar, the movie? Uh, that smacked of realism as far as being able to upload our brains and create these bodies that could travel into far distances in space. But I've, I've debated Hughes uh, on his own uh, show, change, his syndicated talk show, Change Surfer Radio, and uh, Hughes is an unrepentant transhumanist Buddhist for sure. He's the author of Citizen Cyborg, Why Democratic Societies Must Respond to the Redesigned Human of the Future. Well, you know what? I could almost use the same title, Steve, and say why the church must respond to the redesigned human of the future because, folks, this is coming whether people want it to or not, and it is so close now to being unveiled. I'm not talking about uh, cosmologically close. I mean it is very close now. Uh, it could happen literally at any moment, and I think it carries magnificent prophetic uh, themes around it. We're literally talking about large-scale genetic neurological re-engineering of humanity. And if you go even to Wikipedia and look up transhumanists, it'll say this is the next chapter in evolution, the result of accelerating developments in the fields of genomic stem cell research. They give you the whole list uh, and nanotechnology uh, as the next step in human evolution. And for anybody that thinks that this is wishful thinking on the part of the transhumanists, just pick up your newspaper. Get your, get your newest science magazine and start reading. <clears throat> Excuse me, Steve. There was a Reuters article. This was just in 2009, just recently, titled, Scientists Want Debate on Animals with Human Genes. And, Steve, you remember uh, about 24 months ago when they were having the embryology uh, debates in the U.K.? Remember that? Absolutely. And that and there were scientists there, you know, because they want public funding. They want, and they don't want to just rely on private funding. They were coming to the government to try to get tax dollars out of the U.K. so they could do experiments, but their experiments were exotic. They wanted to experiment with splice-like technology, blending humans with animals. And so the government uh, put it forward into a public debate. And if you recall, <coughs> excuse me, uh, even the Vatican had two bishops that showed up and said that if women participate in providing uh, ovum and then later on decide they want to raise this splice baby as their own child, uh, they ought to have the right to do so. These were the most extraordinary conversations. Well, anyway, <coughs> excuse me, those scientists, they're back now. And now they want to know uh, how far the public will allow them to continue going and using public funds. And this news piece, this is a Reuters news article, so we're not talking about weekly world news here. This is a legitimate news article. It starts out, and I'll read it to you, it starts out, a mouse that can speak, a, mon a monkey with Down's syndrome, dogs with human hands and feet. British scientists want to know if such, exper uh, if such experiments are acceptable, end quote. And if you go in and just Google the article and read it for yourself, you'll find out that it goes on with revelations that scientists inside Britain are comfortable now with up to 50-50 animal-human integration, and more alarmingly, the article implies that not all of the research currently under design is being kept at the embryonic level, which is where most of the people in the public still think the splice technology is being kept at the embryonic level, but it's not. There, there are places now where it's fully mature monstrosities, and as I understand it, you actually even saw the movie Splice, right? Yes, I did. And what was interesting about that, good point to uh, splice it into the conversation, the, the whole basis of it, Tom, is, is a, a woman who is one of the scientists, she has a love interest with the other scientists, are doing secret experiments while being funded by this dark mega corporation that hangs out in the background, okay? 
and she takes her egg, inserts it into the synthetic uh, life form. The life form grows into kind of like a female uh, it with a tail. The, the female it is actually, obviously, uh, gets uh, involved sexually with a man. And what, what was interesting to me, there was nothing in the dialogue or even the inference that these things would spring, uh, spring and literally uh, sprout, I guess a better word, wings, and turn into exact caricatures of what I would call is, even from middle-aged woodcuts, it looks like a fallen angel slash uh, demonic hybrid, okay? Wow. And, the, and I, you know, somebody, by the way, somebody sent me an email today after I was explaining that on Coast to Coast the other night, saying, I ruined the movie for him, and I read him back, a, he, I wrote him back an email saying, you don't get it, you missed the whole point. It's not that the movie is being ruined, it's that your life is ready to be ruined. I, I tell people, I've said this for 15 years, when Satan said, ye shall not die, this is what he promises the Illuminati, the New World Order, that they're never going to die, that they're basically going to be able to live in their perversion perpetually with attenuated sense of superhero, super, uh, the ubermensch, the, the very uh, pinnacle of a composite creation, and basically thumb their noses at God and eternal judgment. And I actually had, he's dead now, I actually had, uh, one of uh, the intelligence agency's former top guys tell me about, and, and this guy was as cold as, as, as you know, a, a, I don't want to say it, a mass murderer's heart, yet he, he was brought to tears when he talks about what he's already seen, the animal-human composites, the horrific uh, underground bases, the horrific experimentation. So what, what I'm saying is all of the floater stories, they're all floaters, were 50 to 100 years beyond that right now because, again, as you said, it, it was the uh, Nephilim that uh, interjected, or if you will, or uh, as they, uh, and what they placed themselves into the seed of man to corrupt it, to make, obviously, God's word a lie, and, and it wasn't, but they tried to do that, and now they're doing the same thing, only they're taking it, they're accelerating it, such a, basically this, perpetual life, perpetual downloads, and if people understood, even the pornography industry is putting the vast amounts of money into sex box. Sex mm -hmm. box. You know, and, 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 and you know, you carry those stories on your website. When I first started talking about that and wrote the book Genetic Armageddon, everybody said, ah, that's too far out. No one wants to read about that. Well, I got news for you. That's like Little League compared to what you and I are talking about tonight. And I maintain that the, and, and have been told this, by people in that world that they can clone human beings now, they can give them the, uh, you know, the visual uh, uh, abilities of an eagle, they can give them a, almost like a, a, an ability for spontaneous generational lost limbs, and even DARPA's you know, experimenting, they broke the story of suspended animation. That was such a, a, a minuscule uh, revelation compared to what they can do. So we've got the period now that Jesus spoke about that there were no flesh be left alive. You could say this, the descendants of Adam must disappear so the descend or so that the offspring of those technological hellions can come on the scene. And what's happening to Daguerre and others is they're now coming into the spirit realm where they have been, if you will, agnostics, uh, atheists, but now they're being confronted by the very and I would say this the source of their revelation they're coming face to face with. Yeah, and you know the whole sexual aspect you mentioned in the Splice film. I haven't seen it. I want to see it. It's just not playing in my area yet. When it does play, I want to go see it, obviously, because the film uh, depicts in, in Hollywood style what some of the real science, however, is actually uh, unfolding to be today. And the sexual aspect of it, to me, was interesting purely from both a theological and philosophical point of view because among what the watchers did, there was obviously this sexual side of it. And, and sexual deviation, uh, uh, part of what the Watchers did, and also down through time with the incubus and succubus, there was an, there was an allure, if you will. There was something that was tempting about it, uh, because that's partly what demons do. And in the film previews that I've seen for this film, it, it, they make it very seductive, almost, uh, and it's demonic. Because I haven't seen the movie, but they, they make this woman, even though she's very weird looking and her legs are all distorted and she's got a giant tail and her forehead is, is kind of half split, she's part animal, part uh, human, um, but in, 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 in the depictions that I've seen in the film previews, 
they make her kind of seductive as well. And I don't know, I don't know if she winds up raping the guy or, or if he just gets allured with her or if she, I don't know what happens. No, no, she, and, and, and I don't care about, you know, the thing is, this is too important. Yes, she does. And then the offspring, you're going to love this one, the offspring then has relations with the uh, woman, okay, who ends up uh, carrying uh, the third generation, but the offspring at the end, the male offspring, who seduces, in effect, his mother, okay, interesting, uh, is the one that is the ten-foot giant with wings, okay? A ten-foot ten giant. Yes. Yes. So now, so now you, de giant. you definitely have a spirit of Nephilim that is operating, Absolutely. at least in this film interpretation, we're talking about right. modern incubus and succubus and nephilim. Well, most you Americans explain, think... Hey, Tom, yeah, you better explain what incubus and succubus is because most people don't understand that. Well, the, the, the male and 